Dovetail joints are really durable and they look great. The problem is many woodworkers don't cut enough dovetails to develop the skills required to do it by hand. And dedicated router jigs can be expensive and complicated to use as well. Besides, router jigs tend to make dovetails that look like they were made with a router jig. They have thick pins, sometimes they even look like the tails themselves. Today I'm going to show you how to cut flawless dovetails with narrow pins that look hand cut, but using a router table and a jig that you can easily build yourself. I made a similar video several years ago, but I'm remaking this one because, well, the audience is a lot bigger and many of you never saw that original video, and because I'm also making available a downloadable guide, which includes step-by-step -step photos of the whole dovetailing process, from laying out your joint to cutting the tails and the pins. There's even a section on how to avoid mistakes. You can keep it on your phone or your tablet, or you can print it off and take it to the workshop with you. I think you'll find it really helpful. So I'll link to the guide below this video in the description and pin to the top of the comments. But in this video, I'll show you how the jig cuts the pins half of the joint. Notice I said the pins half, because there is a trade-off for having something so simple and easy to use. The jig cuts the pins, and then the tails are cut at the bandsaw or with a handheld jigsaw. We'll get to that shortly. First, let's get a closer look at the jig. It's built much like a simple table saw sled. There's a base panel with a couple of cross pieces and two inner fences set at angles. On the underside, there is a runner for running it into your miter slot on your router table, which aligns the jig so that a half inch router bit can cut a kerf down through the center the first time you use it. This kerf becomes your reference for aligning your cuts. So you'll always want to use the same half inch router bit each time you use your jig so you preserve that kerf. As I said, this jig cuts the pins half of the dovetail joint. The pins are the wedge shaped fingers that slit between the dovetail shapes in the other half of the joint. The angles on the sides of those pins must perfectly match the angles on the side of the tails and so those are fixed by these angled fences on the jig. To prepare your workpiece, scribe a baseline on both faces of your pins board to indicate the thickness of the mating tails board. Then on the outside face, make a pair of marks near the center. Then make a mark near each corner about a quarter inch away from the edge. And if you like, you can further divide the space with more pairs of marks. The nice thing about this jig is you can make these pins as narrow as you like, and you can space them out however you want. You can even make variably spaced dovetails for a more decorative look. Next, set a bevel square to the angle of the jig's fence, and then use it to carry your marks across the end grain. Finally, carry those marks down the other face with a square. If this sounds confusing, don't worry, the guide will make it very simple. We're going to use the router table jig to remove the waste areas between the pins. I like to color them in so I don't cut in the wrong place. The cutting is done in two steps. First, you align the right side of each waste area with the edge of the kerf in the sled, and you make your cut. You're only going to cut on the right side of each waste area. You're aligning by eye, but don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make your cuts as close to your marks as you can. After you plow a kerf on the right of each waist area, you'll move the workpiece to the other fence and then move your body to the other side of the jig so you're pushing from the other direction. This changes the angle of the cut so you can remove the rest of the waist areas between each pin. I should mention that it's important to keep the workpiece still during each cut. The spinning bit will try to push it sideways, so a clamp is important. That's how easy it is to make perfect pins that look hand cut. Now what about the tails half of the joint? They have to be custom cut to match the pins, so you must trace their shape onto your tails board, being careful to keep the pins board from moving as you trace with a sharp pencil. To cut out the tails, we aren't going to use a jig at all. What we're going to use is the bandsaw, or if you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a handheld jigsaw. While it's tough to cut dovetail pins on the bandsaw, due to the fact that the table only tilts far enough in usually one direction, it's easy to cut the tails on the bandsaw. You just remove the little triangular shapes between each tail. 
But here's a few dovetailing tips that will help you achieve these perfect joints. First, when you cut your tails on the bandsaw, leave the pencil line. If you cut away the line, the joint will be too loose. In fact, I like to leave a sliver of wood sometimes between my bandsaw blade and the line. This will make the joint tight. But if I'm working with pine, the fibers will compress and give me a nice tight looking joint. However, if I'm working with hardwood, you don't want to try to force an overly tight joint together. You'll end up splitting the wood. It should really only take a few light taps with a mallet to seat your joint. Not bad for a router and a bandsaw. It's fast, it's easy, and you can grab that downloadable guide to help you along the way at the link below the video. See you next time. It's just a couple of cuts. Your ears will be fine, right? They will be if you have your Isotunes Bluetooth earbuds in because you'd already have your ANSI certified hearing protection on because you're listening to your favorite music and podcasts. And you're supporting a small family business at the same time. Please use the link below this video to learn more and to show them you support what we do as well.